Welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel. I'm your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightleck, a 25-year veteran of making toys, marketing, producing, concepting, playing with. Well, been playing with them longer than 25 years. In fact, that's actually what I'm going to be talking today about, is toys that I played with and some of my favorite toys growing up. And obviously, if you're a fan of this channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Masters of the Universe, and I'm also a big fan of Star Wars. The Kenner Star Wars line and the Mattel Masters of the Universe line were two of my absolute favorite lines growing up as a kid. But I want to talk about a line today that doesn't get enough love on YouTube and uh, has an interesting history. And no, I'm not talking about Lego. Lego obviously has a lot of YouTube videos. In fact, there's probably more toy videos about Lego than anything else. And Lego was a toy I really enjoyed as a kid, especially the castle and the space sets, because I was into medieval and space, as you saw from He-Man and Star Wars. But one of the issues I always had with Lego is that after you would build them, they would tend to break, kind of. I mean, you know, if you flew them around or smashed them together, they would fall apart, if you will. And that's when I discovered another building set. This was the toy called Constructs, with an X. So, Constructs, I guess you could say. And by far, this was my number one. Now, nowadays, today, for those of you who shop the toy aisles, you may know Constructs more as this. Either a whole bunch of minifigures or Lego-esque sets that are uh, themed for different IP that Mattel puts out. And uh, really, the full name is Mega Constructs. And that's really cool, and you know, that they're using the name, but where did this toy come from? It wasn't always a Lego toy. It used to be a girder and bolt toy set from the 1980s. It premiered in 1983 and lasted till 88. It was essentially the nuts, which were the blue or red pieces there, that would be connected to originally gray girders, long, short, and medium. There were other sort of connector nuts. The red ones were spinners, the black ones were bendy, and the green ones were just another color besides blue. Originally, they were all blue, and the girders were all gray, but that would change in time. The very first construct sets that came out in the early 80s were all about construction. They were had little construction men, constru uh, construction workers, and they were all about building very, very simplistic Things, usually things that had to do with construction sites, like forklifts or trucks, or, you know, boats, I guess, helicopters. But as the line continued to grow, new ideas and new themes took place. The sets were always designed with the idea that you could build whatever you wanted. You didn't have to actually build what was on the package, much like Lego. You could use these as a form factor to create anything you want, even your name in letters. And some sets even can, uh, included electronics, or at least motors, if you will. There was also a younger kid version called Basic Constructs, which had more colors, brighter colors, and simpler patterns for you to follow. But this line was actually absorbed and went away pretty quickly once Mattel and Fisher-Price, well, actually, yes, Fisher-Price at the time, realized that all of the sets, whether they were basic constructs or the uh, what was supposed to be the more mature version with the gray, they all worked together and kids were really just interested in all of them. They didn't need a sort of aged-down version. And Fisher-Price figured out pretty quickly that it was all about building whatever your imagination came up with. It wasn't just about building things that had to do with construction sets, like forklifts and cranes. You could use these as avatars for your imagination and build anything you could possibly imagine. And boy, if you were a kid in the 80s and you were into constructs, these toys were amazing because not only could you build things with them, but they stayed together very tightly. So as opposed to Lego that would crack and break apart sometimes, whatever you built out of constructs, it was easy to take apart, but it was really stable, and they would hold together extremely well, letting you create and keep what you built. The basic set included things like this, wheels, panels, girders, nuts, seats, and sort of flip-open shields, as well as turning pieces. Eventually, the sets grew into themes, starting with space sets, 
which really introduced a lot of new pieces, fuselages, jet engines, tubes, all sorts of things that could expand the Constructs universe. And pretty much once they were in outer space, the next major theme was to do military, because space, military, and barbarian are the three biggest boys' play patterns, as shown in several Masters of the Universe videos. And some of the sets, again, were even motorized, so they would really roll. The space sets were by far my favorite, and once they started including space sets, some with glow-in-the-dark parts, which was, you know, even cooler, well, I was hooked, especially because, well, you can see there's a little guy there inside the cockpit, and while the original minifigures, well, actually we'll get to them in a minute, but they evolved for the space sets as well. So no longer did you have construction workers, but you now had full-fledged astronauts, and spacemen who could fly around in either their personal shuttlecrafts or as part of a gigantic flagship or a space station, kind of like Major Matt Mason back in the day. The new minifigures, and they weren't that mini, they were, you know, a good three inches tall and they were, they had five points of articulation, kind of like a Kenner Star Wars figure, articulated at the shoulders, neck, and head. The original minifigures with the construction sets looked a little bit, I guess, <laughs> more like the village people. They, uh, they, you also had to snap them together and build them, just like you would build the constructs. With the new minifigures that you got, starting with the space sets, you were no longer building the minifigures and snapping on their heads and their hats, but they were just complete action figures, more or less. You were now getting an action figure with your constructs. So you can see the spacemen, the astronauts, next to a uh, construction worker with an astronaut helmet to see the difference. Eventually, even the military sets got even more human-looking with actually sculpted human faces with paint deco for the eyes and the, uh, the eyebrows and sculpted helmets. Theming continued, and with the space set, you started getting these alien sets to kind of battle your good guys, and you knew that the aliens were bad guys because they had purple suits and green eyes and, you know, aliens are bad guys, right? I guess the aliens could have been the good guys, but they were definitely marketed and you could tell on package that these were meant to be sort of your Cobra to your G.I. Joe. And all of their ships included more kind of insectoid-esque parts, tubes, ribbing, things that, you know, looked a little bit more evil. I mean, I suppose you could have made these the good guys in your adventure too, but for most they were the bad guys. So, without much of a storyline, just with the toys alone, a, basically a concept for content emerged without any, you know, there was no TV show, there were no comic books, but you kind of knew who the good guys were, who the bad guys were. You had land vehicles, you had flying vehicles. It was sort of a mix between realistic Earth-based items and fantasy, both in the military and in the space themes. You would get, you know, things like giant launching missiles. You would get, you know, laser guns. You would get camouflage pieces that could snap into place. So you could really build any type of boys' action-adventure vehicle set you wanted. You could build not just vehicles, but you could actually make your own play sets. And with the military and space themes, we got new colors like green and white pieces. So you can see in my office, one of my, uh, my Constructs vehicles, my spaceship that I built as a kid, I still kept. And there it is, front and center, right in the middle of my toy display. This is absolutely, this was my most beloved toy as a kid. And I never took it apart once I built it. This was sort of my, uh, my X-Wing fighter, if you will, that I built for my space hero. Complete with turbo lasers and cannons and, and missiles. You know, you can. I used some parts from military sets, some parts from the space sets. I used some of the uh, alien rocket engines that came with the insectoid aliens, as well as that grip there, so I could fly it around. And this little guy, this was my favorite. This was Captain Spectre, who is the galactic protector. He flew around in his ship, and, well, I kind of passed that name off onto the mighty Spectre from Masters of the Universe. I really love the name. And so it started as an astronaut, eventually became a big purple guy who could travel through time. 
You can also see the influence of the alien figures in the uh, Mighty Spectre outfit. There's definitely some influence there because I really loved these little Constructs figures. And yeah, you can see where Mighty Spectre got some of his influence from. What really blew my mind, though, was once I discovered that the Constructs ships and the cockpits were perfectly in scale with my 3 and 3 fourth Kenner Star Wars figures. So I started building play sets for my Star Wars figures. If I didn't have a Death Star, well, you could just build a Death Star, and you could have layers, and you could have all sorts of different you know, areas of the Death Star, from the control room to the bridge that Luke swang, swung, swang, swung across. And it was completely compatible, scale-wise, to action figure lines. Constructs would eventually find its way over to Mattel when Mattel acquired Fisher-Price, and Mattel re-released Constructs at the uh, very late 90s, early 2000s, about uh, 2001, 2002. But this, while they used some new colors, they didn't really have as much variety. Um, they were really basic. They were aimed at younger children. And they were kind of back to the construction and racing theme that started it with Fisher-Price in the early 80s. So while it was really great to see that Mattel was putting constructs out again now that they owned Fisher-Price and owned all this tooling, they were not as mind-blowing, I think, as they used to be. I mean, you know, they now had things to go on your head and your hand. And, well, eventually, Mattel also made another acquisition besides Fisher-Price. They bought Mega. Mega is most known for making Mega Blocks, which are a Lego-esque toy aimed at younger kids. The Lego, the brick, went into public domain in the 70s. It was no longer under license, so anyone could make a Lego-type brick. And Mega became kind of the go-to preschool version of this. Mega was also making more adult collectible sets, especially under licenses like Halo. So... Before Mattel purchased Mega, they were having Mega Block Halo. Well, Mattel is never one to uh, not use a name they already own. You'll see this recycled a lot on Mattel product from Mattel Hot Wheels called Grizzlore because they own that name, or the Tyco RC Triclops, which had three eyes and rolled around in a circle. And, you know, yeah, names get reused because they're expensive to purchase. So why not? So since they own the word Constructs, by combining Constructs with the newly acquired Mega brand, a new hybrid brand was born, Mega Constructs. And this was a way of up-aging the sets like Halo, so to differentiate them from the Mega Blocks for kids. And eventually Mattel started putting it into more and more licenses, especially licenses that they either owned or had first rights to, like Masters of the Universe. And not only were they making playsets like Lego under the new Mega Constructs brand, but minifigures were making a huge inlay into the brand for all sorts of licenses, and not just licenses that had playsets. Mattel started putting out Mega Block Constructs or Mega Constructs figures as one-offs and selling them on cards as action figures, even if they didn't have a themed playset or themed building set to accompany them. You could buy everything from Ninja Turtles to Xenomorphs to Star Trek to Terminator figures that were compatible with the Mega Construct sets, but there weren't necessarily, you know, you could, there wasn't an Enterprise set, if you will, to build a bridge or a spaceship. You know, there wasn't a, uh, you know, a Nostromo or an FBI headquarters to go with the Aliens or X-Files figures. But if you were into minifigures, and especially minifigures that were compatible with Lego and other building sets, hey, these were great. And it was kind of an all-new form factor to collect. And by issuing them on action figure cards, hey, it was great. So they came a long way, Constructs, from what it started off as construction sets that eventually became space and military. But the building system of using the uh, girders and bolts, well, nowadays it's uh, Fry and Bender on a uh, Lego block. I really miss the original Constructs. I hope that maybe one day it makes a comeback because these were sets that really held together. 
And they really unleashed the imagination. They were so easy to build, so easy to take apart, but they firmly held their shape so you could play with them. I miss Constructs. They were my favorite toy growing up. And for those of you who had them too, love to hear what you did with them. If you like this video, do uh, subscribe to it and or share with other people because it's what tells YouTube to keep sharing it with other people. And that's what it's all about, sharing fun toy knowledge and stories. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.